Thanks so much. Well, CODA has been around for, um, gosh, 18 years now, and I wanted to bring, I know many of you, I want to bring you up to speed on some of our current work. First of all, uh, we're working with Dr. James Catterall, Centers for Research on Collaboration, CROC. And uh, CROC has undertaken a three-year longitudinal study with us. Their work is looking quantitatively at students and their growth in creativity over three years. So we're looking at third graders this year into fourth grade and into fifth grade uh, using uh, Catterall's Next Generation Creativity Survey. In addition, he has a qualitative team and they are in our schools observing if we're seeing changes in creativity. What is it teachers are doing? What is it students are doing? What is it the teaching artist is doing? And then ultimately we're asking the question what conditions are necessary to teach for creativity and how do we sustain the work? What we found that's very fascinating, this is another mask project, but in this case, um, the masks were created, they're movable mouth masks created by sixth grade students who then had to write the documentation and have another class of sixth graders using reverse design complete the same task of creating their, ma their masks uh, with no spoken words used. So it became very, very interesting. But Catterall and his team noticed, they had an observation, that in fact the changes that were going on with the students as they took up these project-based units were running in tandem, almost parallel to what was happening with the teachers' changes. There was a relationship between them that they thought was somewhat uncanny. And indeed, our teacher professional development turns out to be quite an interesting transformative experience. We get teachers who normally haven't been outside of their classrooms interacting with other adults in any meaningful ways related to the curriculum, engaging with each other to make, create, to do, and at first their body language is like this. And once they begin to take up the tasks, they suddenly warm up and they have all kinds of ideas. And you hear things routinely from teachers saying, oh, I had no idea, I taught next to you for 13 years and I thought you were a very linear person. You're so innovative, oh my God. So it's, it's very eye-opening for them, builds a sense of collegiality. We have postulated a set of mechanisms of change. If we're thinking about how do these changes take place, we think that we begin with what is astute observations of what is. We ask lots and lots of questions, and we try and get a real sense, observing in classrooms, these are the routines, this is how things are done. We come in and use inquiry. It's always about questions. We ask the thoughtful questions that teachers have to answer for themselves, for where they sit. So inquiry is really the key. We move into imagining, brainstorming, what could be a 10-week project-based unit utilized through arts integration and then a backward design where we plan and make, with every week, pauses to refine a formative evaluation, if you will. How do we look at how we're going to tweak this? Which students are not speaking? Who's in the extended EL silent period? How do we find a role for the student? And ultimately, presentation. Presentation being very important, very key, because that's where we move into the metacognitive. That's how we know what we know, and indeed, we focus on communication and understanding different audiences. So in the sphere of the ecology of education, we hypothesize that this same set of mechanisms of change may indeed play not only with students and teachers, but also more specifically with teaching artists, principals, superintendents, and brand new for us, parents. So we're looking at applying those mechanisms and parents, that's been very, very interesting. Thus far, we've uh, developed a prototype and we're piloting now in four different schools. Same process coming in, showing parents what we're doing and working in their whole school with all the teachers and all the students and saying, now that you see what we're doing with your children and your children's teachers, what is it you'd like to know that would help you to be the best partners with your child's school? And we sit and listen and they talk and we write and ultimately, we develop a 10-week course. They graduate from that course, and then they and the teaching artists do breakout sessions for a school-wide family arts day. Our teaching artists do the same thing. They present all of their units to each other. We're using tuning protocols to help them to be able to give each other meaningful feedback. Principals as well. Principals are also presenting, and the principals are presenting to other principals. They're on stage at the Association of California School Administrators Association. We're using 
tuning protocols and rubrics that we're putting into the hands of the principals to facilitate. And that's been really, really important, having those tools available for them, and they can tweak them and make them meaningful in their particular schools. As well, we meet regularly with the school board members and the superintendents. We had a great presentation at the California School Boards Association Conference where we had 75 school board members up and dancing and moving, learning math, and the board members, board, board presidents and superintendents did the presentations on what's meaningful in their districts. But we think that's part of the internalization of all of this. Differentiated professional development is where we match the individual teaching artist with the teacher. That's just as critical as it is differentiating with instruction. But then having the teachers work together in teams is also vitally important. And that's where the culture is built. That's where the collegiality. We've moved, we think, from the beginnings of what was professional learning communities into professional creative learning communities, PCLCs. We believe that finding the creative power within teachers is absolutely critically important in order for them to unwrap that from their students. And we know that the key to that for teachers, their superintendent sat in on their end of the year presentation of their projects to each other and said, wow, I'm just amazed. The key to this work that you have undertaken in professional development is your willingness to be vulnerable. We thought that was really, really powerful. Parent creativity is amazing. A couple of key pieces in terms of the first year evaluation, 83% of teachers reported that CODA and Common Core standards were aligned. They could see moving into depth of knowledge. Uh, again, first year where they were very apprehensive. Typical comments from a teacher, give us time. Give us the opportunity to be creative and we will be. So we have a moment now, a window of opportunity. How do we fly in there and do everything we can as we shift from the old standards that represented our past to the new standards that represent the incredible future these young people are going to have? The research continues. Catterall meeting with principals. Last week he met with superintendents. We'll share updates on this. We would love to have you engage with us. We thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about what we're learning, and we welcome the opportunity to learn from you. How did I do? All right.